One of the first few big updates has officially launched on the DJI Mavic 3. And in today's video, I'm going to be going over what is in this new update and how much it actually will transform the Mavic 3 into becoming the drone it should have been on launch day. But I've got my DJI Mavic 3 here and I've put the new update on it, which is 01.00.0400. This update comes in at 376.9 megabytes. So it's kind of a big update but you're gonna get a lot with it, which includes added focus track, master shots in time-lapse, added raw only photo format, reduced video recording noise for ProRes of Mavic 3 Sin, reduced occasional vibration of aircraft, arms in some scenarios, which I've actually encountered myself, improved return to home performance, improved obstacle avoidance performance, improved hover stability, and fixed issue, some computers could not, and then it kind of got cut off, so I'm not sure what that last one is. I probably had to scroll down and I didn't. This is a screenshot that you're seeing from when I was performing the update. But what we're gonna do today is we're gonna get the drone up in the sky, we're gonna play with some of the new features, and overall, I'm gonna tell you guys what I think about it. So let's get this update started. I actually have not flown the drone yet since putting the update on, so you guys are here for it first. So before we get into it, huge shout out to Freewell. Freewell sent me these filters for the Mavic 3. So it has everything from ND4, ND8, 16, 32, 64, um, a CPL filter and an ND1000 and an ND2000. So huge shout out to them. I'm definitely working on a video going over these filters. I've tried each one. But for the sake of this video, I'm actually going to throw on one of the Freewell filters. I'm actually going to put on this CPL filter. I've been alternating between these and the DJI ones that came with the drone. And actually, I shot a whole job the other day using just the Freewell filters. But I'm going to leave all of my thoughts for the Freewell filters for my full review, which I'll be releasing soon. So since I'm gonna be using some of the special flight modes, I'm gonna move up on top of my roof. Okay guys, so I've got the drone launched in the air. You can see me here on the rooftop and we're gonna explore some of these new features. But before I get into that, I just wanna say um, in my, you should not buy the Mavic 3 video. I actually falsely claimed that you could not turn off obstacle avoidance. This was totally wrong. I just didn't understand the settings at the time. It was an honest mistake but you actually can turn off obstacle avoidance. And the way that you do that is you go to the three dots here and under obstacle avoidance action, you just click off. So I don't know what, I don't know how I missed that. But as far as this update goes, you now can shoot photos in raw only. We're already in the photo mode here. And if we go down to format here, you now see that we have the added option of shooting only raw which is awesome. Now that we've gone over raw photos, the next feature we're gonna check out here is Master Shots. So Master Shots is basically, it builds its own like cinematic footage for you. And it's really cool. I just tested it out for the first time and it worked really well. So now we're gonna try again, except I'm gonna do it in this direction so I'm not flying over neighbor's yards. And basically what I'm going to do here is just go into video, tap on master shots thanks for the example okay now there i am i'm going to step here and i'm just going to select myself so now the drone has recognized me and once i hit start it's going to start the master shot so let's do this three two one here we go so this is cool it's like a dolly zoom that's really cool. Zooms out. Going to the left. Well, actually my right, drone's left. And as you can see, it's doing a circle medium, circle close. So as you can see, this is an example of master shots. It is basically taking all of the clips for me 
and what it's going to do after it takes all these clips is it's going to build its own little cinematic movie for me that I can then save to my phone, which is pretty cool. So if you're not like a big drone flyer, you know, this could help you get some pretty cool shots without having to actually do any flying. Very autonomous and seems really cool. So this is pitch up plus fly forward. Wow. Flying up, doing a rocket. The sky actually looks really good. And here it comes. Okay guys, so that was Master Shots. And the next one it, that we're gonna do is Hyperlapse. So you just scroll down to Hyperlapse here. Now unfortunately, Quick Shots and Pano are not available as of yet. So we're still waiting on those but hyperlapse is available so i'm going to actually take a short one here especially because it's sunset and we're going to do it of these clouds so i'm going to go up to 100 feet and we're going to leave the interval two seconds we're going to make the length a little bit more fun how about 10 seconds and max speed one mile per hour so let's check out how the Mavic 3 handles doing a hyperlapse. So we're gonna hit start. And actually while the hyperlapse is being taken right now, since I have a little bit of time here, six minutes, I thought I'd share some of my thoughts about the Mavic 3 since owning it. A lot of people are under the impression that I absolutely hate the drone because my Mavic 3, why you should not buy a video, absolutely took off. It got almost 50,000 views as of the recording of this video. And I wanna thank each and every one of you that watched that video for hearing me out. Probably my most successful video ever launched on the channel just because of how fast it took off. All the comments I got were just amazing to see everyone's thoughts. A lot of positive, a lot of negative. But overall, since being able to use this drone more, and especially because I shoot video for a living, I've used the drone a lot for shooting video for my clients, and my clients are noticing the major difference when it comes to the video recording. The pictures are just okay to me. You know, it's borderline Mavic 2 quality. They're definitely a little bit sharper, and the colors pop a little bit more, but the photos aren't the biggest upgrade. It's really the video. The video is just unbelievable. Being able to record in 4K at 60 frames per second and 4K at 120 frames per second is, has been huge. This is a clip that I shot in Gilbert for one of my clients in slow motion, 120 frames per second of this waterfall. It looks absolutely amazing. Honestly, I couldn't have asked for a better camera when it comes to video. DJI 100% delivered. The other issue are mainly software issues that can be fixed, which they did just fix in this update, uh, a decent amount of them, and opened up some of the new features. And there's gonna be more big updates to come, which is very exciting. Without a doubt, I wouldn't be surprised if someone from DJI watched my video and many other videos criticizing the Mavic 3 and they're hard at work to fix these problems. I've always liked DJI. The one thing I don't like about them is their geofencing. Leave that up to me, the professional that has a part 107 license that knows how to go through the different processes of getting authorization. I really don't think we need the manufacturer getting in the way of that and I don't think it should be on DJI if someone makes a mistake you know blaming the tool versus the person it doesn't really make sense but let's check out this hyperlapse let's see what that looks like okay guys so the hyperlapse just completed so it says video created successfully so if we go here and we can see the video I'll save it sync to phone album so you can see it there in the corner syncing so let's check out what this looks like 
One thing I noticed compared to the Mavic 2, and it could just be because I'm watching on the phone, but one thing I noticed is the drone stayed still a little bit better compared to the Mavic 2. You know, obviously I have to play with this more. That's the first hyperlapse I've taken with this drone. So this other mode is called Focus Track, and it's another mode I've not used before. So I'm gonna bring the drone down a little bit closer to where it can see me. I'm not sure how this works. Oh, okay, here. There we go, this is this is focus track. So apparently it can recognize different subjects now, you just select them on the screen. So if I walk over here, wow, incredibly fluid. Let's move over here, walk behind the umbrella. Okay, so it lost me. Oh, it regained. That's pretty impressive. So this is spotlight, so I wonder if I move the camera like this, or move the drone like this, drone's gonna die. But I definitely want to play with this more, because this seems like a really good way to keep subjects in focus. But that is cool that we now have, have that. It's too bad that this is beeping. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna land the drone and I'm gonna wrap up this video with my thoughts on some of these new features. So overall, I think this is a very solid update. I think that it was definitely much needed. I'm excited to see that DJI is listening and is rolling these things out faster. I mean, they had enough time to create this drone. A lot of these features I feel should have came on launch day, but with any new piece of technology, you have to be aware that there can be setbacks and with software, you can update your drone and make it better. So that is what DJI is doing. They're fixing these problems. I'm excited to play with some of these features more especially this new focus track and also playing with the quick shots a little bit or not the quick shots the master shots a little bit in different places like i said i've never used master shots before so that was really cool to play with it i actually am beginning to like it more and more as i continue to use it and i think that with the software updates it's only going to become a better drone very exciting to see what dji has done another thing that i just want to say before exiting this video prior to this update i was having some connectivity issues with the controller and the drone. So the controller would stay connected, but on the screen, it wouldn't show what I was seeing out the camera and it just said that it was disconnected. Kind of scary because I was shooting for a client the other day and this happened. Luckily I had control over the drone still and all I did was hit return to home and it came back and landed. And I always fly with the drone in visual line of sight so I wasn't worried about it flying away. I could see it the whole time. It's definitely something to be aware of and if you haven't updated to this new update, I would do it right away because I didn't have any issues like that during this flight which was very good to see. Although I only flew one battery today, just now for this video, but I'm definitely gonna be playing with this more this weekend and um, making more videos about the Mavic 3. So I'm very excited to do that. Definitely make sure to hit the subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss any of my videos. And also make sure to give the video a thumbs up so that way it ranks higher in the algorithm. But until next time guys, I'll see you in the next video.